Good afternoon. God bless you guys. This is Apostle Carla McDougal. Amen. With Winning in Prayer Global on Winning in Prayer Television. Amen. Listen, I just need you guys to join me for a quick moment. I'm going to ask you guys to do something that I don't personally ask um, that often, and that is that you would share, like, tag, do whatever it takes, amen, to get somebody else in on what God wants to say to his people in this time. Amen. Um, as you all know that we are in one of the, um, I don't want to say roughest, but I can't think of another word, that we as the body of Christ in this generation, we are in the middle, we are nearly in the middle of one of the roughest decades that we have ever known in our time. Amen. In our lifetime, and in the life of this particular generation, I want to take an opportunity because there are many words. Y'all know how we do. Amen. God gives everybody a word for what he desires for the year to come, the, the next three years, four years, five years, the next full decade. Amen. But what we want to do, amen, is make sure that we don't jump ahead of God. What you don't want to do is get the word for the next five years and then you jump to the fifth year and miss everything in between. What happens is, is that when you get to the fifth year, the same glory of God released in that year that's intended by God to strengthen his people, to increase his people, to perfect his people, to give his people an advantage becomes the same word that becomes destruction to a people that aren't prepared to receive what God has. Amen. Listen, y'all, y'all got to hear my heart. All that God has spoken out of the mouth of the true prophet, every word that God has released out of the prophetic voice, y'all hear the heart of God, every word that is in the word, every promise, y'all don't hear the heart of God. God wants to manifest. And yes, 2024 is going to be a, a, a year of great rest, uh, restoration. It's a year of great reaping. Come on here, y'all. We already know it's a year that God is going to repay you for your faithfulness. It is a year that God is going to strengthen. God is going to restore your family. God is going to add back to you everything that the enemy stole. God is going to stop what's about to be put to death. Uh, uh, on your behalf. God is about to do everything that he promised. Well, let me rephrase that. God has released it already in the earth. 2024, you should be walking in the manifestation of the promises of God. But can I help us on today? Amen. This is the key to this thing right here. You can't go in 2024 the way that you are in 2023. Come on here, y'all. Some of you misunderstood the um testing and the trying of God. Some of you misunderstood your tribulation to be acts of warfare. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. And what you did was put yourself in a battle against God. So for some of you, 2023 was an entire year of warfare, but you weren't battling an enemy. You were battling the God of your salvation. Some of you were in a battle and it was truly your enemy you barely made it out. Come on here. Some are still missing it, missing in action. Some are still prisoners of war. Some are severely wounded. Come on here. Some are near the point of death and you can't enter in you can't enter into D, uh, January 1st, 2024, dragging in broken limbs, dragging in limbs that are barely hanging on, dragging in mindsets that are barely able to comprehend your name. You don't hear the heart of God. God wants to do right now in this next 30 days, what God wants to do is mass deliverance. God wants to deliver his people in a mass deliverance and not the kind that you think it is not the kind when we come together all over the world and we're um, charging unspeakable amounts of money and we're drawing people in with celebrity preaching and we're drawing people in with the promise of prophetic words that's going to change their lives but you don't have a word that's going to cast out a demon. You don't have a word that's going to bring deliverance. You don't have a word that's going to heal the sick. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. Listen, God wants his people to enter January 1st, 2024. He wants us to be in, enter in, um, uh, um, free, 
in, at liberty, healed, delivered, blessed. And listen, he wants you to enter, enter in blessed, which means that you can't measure your level of blessedness. And I said level, and I don't even deal with levels, but for those of you who do, amen, I don't operate on levels, but for those of you who are, who are still there, God doesn't want to bless on levels that are based on your financial increase, that are based on your social media following, that are based on how how well your name is known. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. God needs you to know you're blessed even if you're isolated in a cave all by yourself. Look, I just wanted to take a few moments for those of you who were able to um, catch the broadcast on the past on this past Sunday. Amen. I just want to reiterate this thing about this deliverance, about this mass deliverance, because listen, um, when you have a deliverance session or a deliverance service, amen, and, and you have multiple people coming down to the altar, and, and I'm not knocking that, y'all, to the heart of God, I got delivered, amen, in some mass deliverance services, I got delivered at some altars, amen, um, I had demons cast out and all that and the other, but y'all, hear the heart of God, when God teaches you better, you do the better that God teaches, when God gives you greater, you operate out of that place of greater, when God brings you higher, you operate from the higher uh, place, when God gives you greater insight, gives you a, brings you to deeper depths, then you operate operate out of the depth of your knowledge and understanding. You no longer operate out of what just got you through. Y'all hear the heart of God. I was sharing with someone on yesterday. Hear me. God allowed me to do some crazy stuff in ministry to get his people free while sitting back thinking we'll be able to use it for real one day. There are some people that God delivered a man uh, at my ministry out of my ignorance because I thought it was what I did at the altar. I thought it was how loud I spoke. I thought it was this, that, there, and the other, how many tongues I could speak in, how many times I could make the demon say what I wanted him to say. Oh, come on here, y'all. I thought that I was doing the dog on thing, and I messed around and started studying the word of God and found out that deliverance, that demons are cast out out by the power of God's word that healing is made manifest, that sickness, every manner of sickness and disease is healed by the power of God's word. I messed around and found out that if people were delivered, over 600,000 people were delivered out of um, a bloodline generational, hear the heart of God, bondage. They were delivered from under a generational bloodline curse that kept them in bondage to all of their enemies that kept them under attack and in warfare. Y'all hear the heart of God and I messed around and found out that those people were delivered by the power of God's word. I messed around and found out that God released a word through the man of God, Moses, that caused the people to be stirred up in the things of God that caused the people to actually make that trek across that Red Sea. Y'all don't hear the heart of God that got that people free from, uh, from um, the bondage of their captor. Come on, y'all. And so, Apostle McDougal, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the power of the word of God. Come on here. I'm talking to leaders right now. If, if anybody that's watching or whatever the case may be, um, you share to your leader. You share to any other leader. If your leader is doing the doggone thing, share that with your leader. And then um, if your leader is not doing the doggone thing, share that with your leader. You don't hear the heart of God. Why? Because it's not all of the acrobatics. It's not all of the charisma. Come on here, y'all. It's not the hoot and the holler. It's not that losing breath. It's not speaking in tongues. It's not this running around that we do. It's not the swinging off the chandelier. Doesn't matter how loud you can shout hallelujah, how hard you can clap your feet and how, how hard you can clap your hands and how high you can put your feet up and put them back down. It's about the power of God's word. It's about the ability to to release the word of God with all power and authority. It is about the ability to speak the word of God in the hearing of the people and the people be immediately set free. 
Come on, y'all. Listen, when you cast out demon, demons by the power of your word and by the power of somebody else's word, you're wrestling for hours with one demon, one individual. But when you cast out a demon with the power of God's word, by the power of God's word, you can create a mass deliverance that causes demons to be cast out because deliverance is not deliverance and all you did was cast out a demon. Deliverance is not deliverance until you have cast out the demons and healed every manner of sickness and disease in that individual. But apostle, it's a, a diagnosis of cancer. It's a sickness and a disease. Apostle, it's a diagnosis of full-blown AIDS. It's a sickness and a disease. Apostle, the doctor said that they won't overcome. It's a sickness and a disease. And the scripture in Matthew 10 and 1 says that he called unto him his twin disciples and he gave them power against every unclean spirit that in that power with that power by that power come on glory that they could cast out every demon come on y'all and they can heal every manner of every sickness and every manner of every disease y'all gotta help me amen come on y'all god is a holistic god and when he casts out one demon they all have to come out Come on, y'all. Y'all don't believe it. Amen. In Mark chapter number five, come on, y'all. When the demons, and this is the thing, y'all, demons are not trembling when some of y'all show up. Why? Because you're operating in a power that's created by your natural success. You're operating out of a power so you can get people, and I'm talking to leaders, amen. This is what this is about. This is who this is to. Y'all hear the heart of God. Every bona fide leader, every wannabe leader, every emerging leader, every scared leader, and every leader that's about to reemerge. Y'all hear the heart of God. Look, y'all got too much spiritual warfare going on and a whole lot of defeat. A lot of spiritual war. Some of you are in a battle, out of a battle, in a battle, out of a battle, and there's no victory in any of the battles. That means that you're missing the most important weapon. Apostle, I thought you were talking about deliverance. I am. Because you have to do the warfare before you get to the place of casting out demons. And the warfare is not about the demons that you fight to get somebody else free. It's about the battleground of your mind. It's a, your ability to keep your mind focused on God. It's about your ability to meditate on the word of God day and night. Come on here, y'all. Look, I'm about to say y'all a few chains and I'm about to save you some money in your insurance plan. If you put your mind on God, if you meditate his word day and night, come on y'all, I'm coming and going in and out, up and down. I promise you, you won't need your therapist. Come on here y'all. Amen. And it's all right. Get you a therapist until you get Jesus. Come on here. But don't be at the therapist three times a week. And then you all live talking about how powerful you are, because the powerful, the power that is in you is the power that makes you. The power that's in you is the power that makes you. And the power that makes you is the power that you release. And if that power ain't strong enough to heal your mind, if that power is not strong enough to heal your heart, if that power is not strong enough to heal in your family, if that power is not strong enough to cast out your demons, if that power is not strong enough to give you the victory in the battle, if that power is not strong enough to manifest increase in in your life, then that power doesn't work for me. Come on, y'all. I'm trying to help you. Amen. Because I can hear an apostle. I tell you, I've been working and the people don't want to be free. I have met some people over the last few weeks that are dying to be free. I have met some people over the last few weeks that knows if I can just get a real word. If I can get a word, come on here. Now, I'm about to piss some of you off and that's all right with me because I love you and you know I do. Amen. But let me tell you something. It's not the power of the word um, it's not um, the power that God gave you to get wealth. Come on here. Has to first work in every other area of your life. 
So if you spend all your time using that power to get wealth, but you hadn't used that power to stop your tongue from lying, you hadn't used that power to purge that hatred and that bitterness and that jealousy out of your heart. You hadn't used that power, come on here, to draw your family back to God. You hadn't used that power to pray a word that's going to manifest the moment you open your mouth to pray. You don't, you, you haven't used that power to bring deliverance to your house. You haven't used that power to get you and your family from under a bloodline curse, you might not have the power that you think you have. Come on, y'all. Apostle do the man, you you talking trash. I am. Because it is my express desire to see what is the will of God take place and manifest. Y'all hear the heart of God and manifest. It is my express desire. I want to see every believer. Come on, y'all. And somebody says that's not realistic. Oh, it's realistic. It's realistic. And then I need I have a, I want to see every every true believer. Amen. I want to see every believer be a true believer, but you can't do it without the word. I want to see every true believer get what God promised them in 2024, but you can't do it without the word. You can't do it. The words that I write in a book is not enough to get you free. The words that I write in a book, not enough to keep you free. Come on, y'all. I'm looking at generations of people within the generation of this earth right now who are called by God, who are chosen by God, who are anointed by God. And yet it appears that there is no power. Come on here, y'all, to overcome. There's no power to endure. There's no power to withstand the temptations of the enemy. Y'all got to hear the heart of God. Listen, I heard Jesus say, in the book of Revelation, chapter number three, as he was talking to the church at Philadelphia, I heard the Lord say, come on here to the members of the church at Philadelphia. I heard him say to the apostle that birthed that church, to the apostle that oversees that church, to the apostle that's the presiding prelate of that church. Y'all hear the heart of God. I heard him say that you held to the patience of my word. Oh, here, even in your little strength, strength, even in your weakness, even, look, 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 because strength represents numbers as well as it does physical ability, as well as it does mental and emotional stability, it represents numbers of people, even in your little strength, even when you were the only person that believed the word for what it is, even when you were the only person by yourself, even because you wouldn't follow the multitude and you wouldn't run with the crowd, even when you didn't chase after a big name, but you stuck with my word. Word. He said, you still endured my word. Even when it brought persecution, you still endured my word. Even when it brought temptation, come on here, where the enemy is tempting you to come out, where the enemy is tempting you to reject God's word, when the enemy is uh, um, tempting you to do things of your own and in your own, you don't hear the heart of God, you still wouldn't be moved. Come on, y'all. Listen, we're getting, I don't doubt that some of you are casting out demons. And I don't doubt that some of you are causing, uh, are healing. Uh huh. You're not causing, God is causing and you're just doing it. Amen. Um, I don't doubt that some of you are healing all men are sickness and disease. I don't doubt that some of you are bringing God's people to a state of deliverance. Amen. Uh, what I do doubt and what I am not certain about um, is the validity of your operation. Come on here, y'all. Listen to me. You can't cast the demon out today and that joke will come back next week. Why? Because there's more to just standing before God's people, hamara, shot, niggity, knock, knock, knock. Come on here, yelling and screaming in the mic, weeping and yelling and screaming and hollering at the devil. It's more to that than get the people free. And then you prophesy to them and lay your hands on them and they fall out in the floor and spitting all up on people's carpets and whatnot. No, 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 no. There is more to deliverance than that. It's deeper than that. Come on here, y'all. Listen, in Acts chapter number um, 16, y'all know the story. I don't even have to go there. When Paul, first of all, y'all are spending too much time casting out one demon. Because I saw Jesus. 
Amen. In Mark um, chapter number uh, uh, five, I saw Jesus, first of all, when he was minding his business in the upper coast. Come on here. I saw where demons were trembling and they became afraid and they started acting out and they started acting a fool as they begged Jesus not to cast them into the sea. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. Amen. Second of all, I saw Jesus. I saw this thing with my own two eyes. I saw Jesus cast a demon out of a madman. Come on here, y'all, who called himself Legion. Amen. And he said, for we are many. Come on here. So he didn't name. Come on, for those of you who need to know the name of the demon and you need to hear the demon say it. Come on here. That demon didn't name every demon. Come on here. That possessed that man. He just gave the name he wanted to give, Legion, because it's a whole bunch of us. Come on, y'all. But guess what Jesus did with one word? He cast out Legion. With one word. Come on here. The folks wanted Jesus out of their region. Why? Because you cast those demons into our swine. That 2,000 demons, you done took out about 2,000 swine. You have destroyed our money. Come on here, y'all. The word, the power you have to bring God's people to a state of deliverance ought to make people know that you just turned their world upside down. That's what true deliverance. True deliverance is turning that world upside down. And you can't do it except it be with the word of God. When you release the word of God with power and with authority, y'all don't hear the heart of God. Apostle, are you talking about casting out demons on the word of God? I'm talking about both. Because if you're casting out demons by any means other than the word of God, you're just playing. Come on, y'all. I'm in the word. You're just playing. If you're utilizing any other word, I know many people wrote books and they are awesome books. And I read them, my dog won't sell, and I studied them and even followed the direction and the instruction thereof mm -hmm. and had some successes. Y'all hear the heart of God. But there's no greater success to, than to meet a joker 15 years later that you don't recognize who is still free. And so what you have to do is ask yourself, what is the rate of freedom and liberty look like in my deliverance ministry? When I'm casting out demons, what's the rate of deliverance? And I'm not talking about how many people. I'm, I, I guess I should say, what, what, when I say the rate, how many people are still delivered? Y'all don't hear the heart of God. Come on, y'all. Because you cannot get a people free. And then when it benefits you, you change up on that people and bring them back. Let me just tell y'all what I heard the Lord say this morning so I can get out of the way. Amen. Because, amen, I, I am doing um, what apostles do. And that is, uh, by the word of God, we reprove, we rebuke, and we reprimand. And yes, I'm talking trash to deliverance ministers and deliverance workers. Amen. Because your lifestyle has to be conducive to what you're trying to bring into someone else's life. Amen. Um, if you want to bring a person into a state of freedom and liberty, then your life needs to be free and at liberty. You need to be able to sleep at night without the aid. Come on here. Without the aid of sleep medication, you need to be able to get in your bed to lie down and you need to be able to rest. Your mind needs to be at peace. Your physical body needs to be at rest. And if you don't have the power to get you there, you're not getting anybody truly free. Y'all hear the heart of God. Come on here. When you administer deliverance, come on here, y'all. The it's not so much that the um, adversities and the uh, attacks of those people increase because they don't. They're the same adversities, the same adversaries, the same attacks. Come on, y'all. The same opposition. What happens is is that that people can now recognize the opposition, adversity, and attacks, and they know what to do to overcome victoriously. Come on, y'all. They know what to do to overcome. Listen, there really aren't but three major enemies. You can, everything that is against the will of God, you can find in one or all of these three entities. That is Satan, sin, and your flesh. Satan, sin, and your flesh. Come on here, y'all. 
And if you don't have the power, if you don't know God, as the old folks say, in the free will parting of your sin, because some of you know of God based on somebody else's amen, deliverance, but you don't know God in, in your deliverance. You don't know the God of your salvation. You know the God of somebody else's salvation because that's what they told you, but you don't know the God of your salvation. Come on, y'all. Come on, listen, when the power of God's word is with you, you don't complain about what you can fix. You just fix it. Come on, y'all. You don't complain about what you can't fix, what you cannot fix. You don't complain about it. You just pass it on to the one who can fix it. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. Listen, let me just, I don't know any other way to put it. This is probably the most weak need jelly back generation of believers that I have ever seen in all my unsaved and saved life. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. Everything weakens the believer at the knees. Everything, most believers of this generation, oh my God, don't let an individual get offended. When an individual gets offended, the enemy can take that joker's entire bloodline out and you won't even know it till it's done. Come on, y'all. I heard the Lord say that this is a time of great and mass deliverance. Amen. Um, he said uh, um, that I have released a great and mass deliverance. All, um, he said this is a time of great and mass deliverance. He said, um, gone are the days whereby we just hold deliverance sessions and the people get a temporary freedom and the people get a temporary deliverance. He said that they are only free and delivered uh, for that moment. And y'all know me, I'm a little bit mentally. Why is it so temporary, God? Why are the people only staying delivered for X amount of weeks or months? Why are they only staying delivered for a few days? Why is that deliverance not lasting? Why is it that we find that people in a worse state than they were prior to casting out those demons. What he said, they ain't casting out demons. Come on, y'all. Two, he says, the means by which they're casting out demons carries no power. Speaking in tongues carries no power to cast out a demon. You can speak tongues in him all day. Spirit of detonation, I see you in the name of Jesus. He ain't moved. He ain't weakened. His hair is not blowing in the wind. He ain't fearful. He ain't nothing. He's just sitting there watching. Why? He don't understand what you're saying. And so your power is useless because he don't understand. Come on, y'all. Amen. Listen, let me tell you what moves. Let me tell you what forces, because to cast out means to forcibly remove and to throw down. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. There's nothing more powerful than the word of God that can do that. I, I'm in the word. I, I, I'm going to give y'all a scripture in a minute. Amen. But this is what he said. This is a time of great and mass deliverance. He said, gone are the days whereby we just hold. We just hold. I didn't say he was canceling deliverance sessions. So nobody lie on me to the Lord or to your neighbor or to your friend. Amen. Don't call your leader. Don't gather together a coven of witches because that's what that'll be. When you get a group of people to come together, they go against the word of God, the validity of the word. Y'all hear the heart of God. God, it's a coven of witches. Y'all hear my heart so that you get together with your coven and y'all throw Apostle Prime and Duba's name in the pot because y'all are upset because the truth has found you out. As many deliverance services as we've had in the last two decades, and we don't have any more free people than that. Come on, y'all. People are still in darkness. People are still, I, I, I've just been watching people all over as they minister the word of God. And I watch how people get up and describe people who are about to deliver the word. And they are preachers, preacher, and they are anointed by God. And they have a word that's going to set you free. And the joker get up there. Come on, y'all. And then maybe quote, read the scripture, their text, quote about three or four more scriptures, try to prophesy the rest of that, scream and holler and speak in tongues halfway through it. And the people are just shouting because that's what they're conditioned to do. The people are clapping because that's what they're conditioned to do. Come on, y'all. Preachers are spending more time telling you to talk to your neighbor than they are talking to you. Uh, 
tell your neighbor what the Lord said. But if if I and then listen, can I help y'all leaders? So we tell the people to tell our neighbor what the Lord said. Uh huh. And all they're doing is just passing it to somebody else. They're passing the buck. And then we're mad because they won't stay delivered. We're mad because they won't get delivered. We're mad. And I'm just saying we because I'm a leader. And we're mad, some of us, come on here, y'all, because the people won't walk upright. The people won't be faithful to God. The word of God is the glue that binds them. Come on here, that binds them to God. It is the thing that keeps them. Listen, y'all, let me tell you, I already said, and I want to throw y'all a, a few scriptures. I want to throw you guys maybe about 30 scriptures. And then y'all go back and take a look at those in your own time about the power of the word. Listen, because I am determined to bring deliverance and to manifest. I'm determined to cast out every demon that Holy Ghost says to cast out. I am determined to heal every manner of sickness and disease of every individual that I encounter and experience. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. I intend to deliver every individual that comes across my path. I intend to bring them out of the bondage of slavery. I intend to bring them out of the bondage of sin, that they are yoked back up in the bondage of sin. I am determined to get them free from the uh, um, mindset of the enemy. I am determined to get them free from the effects and the impact that wickedness and evil in this earth has on their life. I am determined to get a group of God's people from the state of their Egypt place, their, their Egypt mentality to a state of total freedom. I intend to take my 11 day journey and get the people there in five and a half. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. I am determined that the people that the Lord sends me to, to bring deliverance into their lives, I am determined that they won't be in the wilderness. And while I'm before God in prayer and studying the word, I am determined that they won't be worshiping a God that they made with their own hands. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. I am determined that if I have to strike a rock, that I'll strike it only one time. I am determined to feed this people with the bread of heaven. Come on here because men don't live by every uh, by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. I am determined to get that people come on here y'all to that Jordan River. Uh huh. The low place the, that, that they have to cross over in order to get to the place of promise. I am determined. Come on here, y'all, that they will not drop the glory. I am determined that every choker that I encounter, that I meet, that I experience, y'all don't hear the heart of God, that they become the carriers of God's glory who know how to distribute the glory of God wherever they set the soles of their feet. I am determined as a minister of the gospel of Jesus. Christ. I am determined to turn this world upside down. I am determined to ensure the well-being of the people of God. Y'all listen to me. So he says um, that, 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 that momentary, that momentary deliverance, that deliverance that only lasts for a short time. Y'all know the time that, that um, you, you're casting demons out and then you prophesy to the people and you lay hands on the people and you lay them out or they, you slay them in the spirit or whatever we call it today. Um, you cause them to throw up and to spit up and to purge in buckets and trash cans and you got people wiping their noses and their mouths and they hit the floor and you pat them on the back. No demon comes out because you pat that joker on the back. Come on here, y'all. That demon comes out by the power of the word that you speak. If by the word of God, you can cause angels, come on here, to move on your behalf, and I'm in the word, the, 100 divi the 103rd division of the book of Psalms in verse number 20, it says that the angels move, come on here, at the voice that delivers God's command, and that is his word. If the angels of God can be put on assignment can be dispatched on that assignment, assignment, can work on behalf of those that are assigned into their hands. Come on here. Oh, I'm determined. 
that the same can happen for demons. Listen, the power and authority simply means that you have the right. You have the right to change um, the course of events. You have the right to determine and to influence people's behaviors. And if you can do that with people, certainly you can do it with a demon. Now listen, so I heard the Lord say that the power of man's word only delivers a momentary deliverance. It only manifests a momentary deliverance. Come on here, y'all. Amen. Um, I eat a partial deliverance, which makes no sense to me because I'm getting every demon that the Holy Spirit reveals. Otherwise, I can just hang my deliverance cap up. Because we look crazy sending, didn't get administering deliverance for five hours today, sending the people home and telling them to come back three days later, and we hold them three more hours and we send them home and tell them to come back later. No, 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 no. You don't see that anywhere in scripture. You don't see anywhere in scripture where it took three days for a joker to be delivered. You don't see anywhere in scripture where it took a month or a week for an individual to be delivered. You don't find that. But that's what we told ourselves. That's the illusion that deliverance ministers and deliverance workers gave to themselves. We gave ourselves, we gave ourselves an, a, um, an escape goat. We gave ourselves a man, a pass to live how we want to live, to think like we want to think, to talk like we want to talk, to be connected to whom we want to be connected to and still have the power over every unclean demon. It's not true. It's not true. If you smell like the demon, you certainly can't clean him up. If you operate as the demon, you certainly can't cast him out. The one thing that um, the one thing that the Pharisees and Sadducees were good at, what, what we're telling the truth about, is that a house divided against itself cannot stand. That's what Jesus said. And the one thing that Jesus most assuredly reassured, and it was a verily, verily word. It was a true word that cannot be changed or undone. Y'all hear the heart of God, that by the spirit of Satan, you can't cast out Satan. You can't cast out a demon. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. Listen, so God said that this momentary deliverance that is manifested through the power of man's word, he said it gives the illusion to his people that deliverance can only take place in certain settings that it can only take place when there's a deliverance, a healing and deliverance revival, a healing and deliverance conference, a healing and deliverance session, that it can only take place when you're one-on-one -on -one and then with the deliverance minister that you had to pay for. Y'all hear the heart of God, that's another subject. And that I, I, I'm a laborer and I'm worthy of my hire, but some stuff you don't have to charge for. Come on here, y'all. Amen. And so this is what he said. He said, it makes deliverance um, a, a strange and spooky kind of occurrence. It makes it seem as though deliverance is reserved for certain people. Can I help y'all? And I'm not talking about the rich and the upstanding. It makes it seem like that those who are impoverished, it makes it seem like that those who uh, don't look like us, it makes it seem as though that those who don't come to church and those who won't come to our churches and those who won't follow us throughout social media and those who question the word that we put out. They question the validity of the lifestyle that we lead. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. It appears that they're the only people that need to be delivered. It appears that they're the only people that have demons, while the rest of us living in big houses, driving fancy cars with fat bank accounts appear to already be delivered. Why? Because the wisdom of man's word has made us think. Come on here, y'all. I'll say us because I'm sure I thought like that at some point, man, um, but I don't think like that anymore. Listen, what you have, what you drive, what you wear, where you live, and what your bank account looks like is not indicative of your freedom and liberty. It is indicative of your ability to make money or it is indicative of your trust fund. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. Come on, y'all. Listen, there's no way God is going to give you the power to start a business that bilks his people. Come on. That, that, that has nothing to do with it. He said, this is what he said. He said um, that in this mass deliverance, God intends to bring freedom and liberty to whomsoever will. 
Let me give you all these couple of scriptures and get out of your way. Amen. Because I only intended to be here for a couple of minutes. Amen. Um, okay. Maybe a little bit more than a couple, I mean, you know, a couple of times, you know, 30 or so. Amen. But y'all get this. Um, these were this the, these scriptures I'm about to give you, and I and I chose to do 30 scriptures because 30 represents um, your dedication to the call of God on your life. It represents your dedication, your loyalty, and your commitment to the task that God has set before you. Come on here in your calling and election. The number 30 uh, represents your physical and your mental stability. It represents your physical and your mental maturity. It represents your ability to handle major responsibility and not blame anybody else. Come on here. It, it, it um, The number 30 represents um, your maturity to such a degree that you will allow yourself to be held accountable, even if it's something that you did not do. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. That you have to pay the price for something that someone else had, that someone else did. In other words, when I say pay the price, again, you have to accept responsibility and accountability for your actions and your life. Again, the number 30 also represents um, sacrifice. And our greatest example of sacrifice is that of the Lamb of God. Come on here. It represents our willingness to lay our lives down. Jesus told Potiphar, you didn't give me this life and you can't take it at any given moment. I can call upon legions of, of angels that will take this place off the map. Y'all hear the heart of God. So what, what was he saying to him? You ain't took nothing from me, devil. I'm giving this for the purpose of God's people getting free. And if you are a minister of the gospel, your sacrifice ought to be just like that. You don't get to sacrifice what you no longer need. You don't get to sacrifice what is no longer working for you. You have to sacrifice that which is still viable, that which is alive, that which is still brand new, that which still works. That's what has to be sacrificed. Mm. It also means um, the blood of Jesus itself. Um, and the power in the blood is not just enough to cleanse because it's more than that. The power of the blood cleanses, it delivers, it sets free, it manifests, it protects. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. And so let me give you these um, scriptures and let me say this um, to every apostle, every prophet, every evangelist, every pastor and teacher, every bishop, every overseer, every elder, every deacon, and every teacher and want to be teacher. Let me help you. This is the last time you'll be able to get away without studying the word of God. This is it right here. Amen. I heard the Lord say, and I'm going to read it. Amen. He says, no longer he says that the ministers the, of the gospel, the preachers of the gospel, the deliverers of the glad tiding will no longer have the option of studying my word. You no longer have the option. You either study it or you don't. He said the word of God is the secret place by which I shield and protect all of my people. So if you're not preaching and teaching gospel, gospel, not agenda. Listen, can I help y'all? To preach means um, to propagate. And that simply means to make sure that you are spreading the gospel everywhere you go. It means to make sure that you are promoting the gospel, that you are advancing the gospel, that you are publicizing. There's no greater way to publicize the word of God than to live it. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. Why? Because by the time folks realize that you're in the same state that they're in, and they started asking you, how come you hadn't lost your mind? And they start asking you, how come you hadn't withdrawn from ministry? And they start asking you, how come you're still holding on? And they ask you, how come you're still faithful? Come on, y'all. How come you hadn't turned your back on God? How come you hadn't taken your own life? When they ask you that, then you can come back and say, for the word of God. Y'all hear the heart of God. 
It's the word. Let me let me tell you what 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 this is. What I heard him say um, concerning his word. I want to give you all these few little scriptures. Again, may not get the opportunity to, to expound them all because I'm giving myself a few minutes to be done. Amen. But I will expound some and others I will um, give to you. Amen. The first scripture that I want uh, to give and maybe even expound it just a little bit is in Luke chapter number four. Amen. And we're looking at verses 32 through 36. 32 says, and they were astonished at his doctrine for his word was with power. Y'all hear the heart of God. So if you're preaching any gospel other than that of Jesus Christ, again, the word that you released has no power. 33 says, and in the synagogue, there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil, a man, and cried out with a loud voice. Y'all hear the heart of God. I'm just backing up what I've already said for the last 50 minutes. Amen. Verse um, four, uh, 34 says, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Can I help y'all? Some deliverance workers that I know today, some deliverance ministers that I know today would smile and grin and their chest would stick out and they would be puffed up and their nose would be up in the air because the devil said, I know who you are. But can I show you what you're supposed to respond? You don't have time to dialogue with a demon. There's too many to cast out. And they switch up on you. They get like a little, they get civilish. They start acting like civil and they switch up on you. The different personalities come forth and start speaking to you. You don't hear the heart of God. This is how Jesus responded. And Jesus rebuked him. And he didn't say, oh, thou unclean spirit of the devil, I rebuke you because that's not how you rebuke a demon. How you rebuke a demon or anybody else is when you release the word of God in a divided truth. Listen, and Jesus rebuked him. You can just put by saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. Y'all hear the heart of God. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. Didn't throw the baby all across the room. Didn't rip and tear the baby. Jesus said, hold your peace. In other words, shut your mouth and come on out. Come on, y'all. Look. And they didn't even put an exclamation mark right there. They put a period right there. He didn't have to yell it, scream it, or holler it. He spoke it with authority. He spoke it in power. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. Y'all doing too much. We are doing too much. Listen, hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and speak among themselves saying, what a word is this? Come on here, y'all. They didn't ask the question. They were all just shouting and declaring this is some kind of word. He said, for with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirits. And they did what? Bible says they came out. Luke 4, um, 32, amen, and 36. Amen. Acts 19 and 20. Y'all come on here. Let's, let's, amen. Acts 19 and 20. I might have a few minutes, amen, to expound Acts 19 and 20. Amen. Um, the word of God grew and it prevailed. So the word of God, first and foremost, will cast out demons with, uh, without all the theatrics and the charisma. Amen. It will cast out demons without you speaking in tongues. It will cast out demons without you having to fast 30 minutes or 30 hours before you got there because the word of God will cause you to put yourself on the time of prayer and fasting, to, to consecrate yourself, to pull yourself out of the day-to-day -day activities of your life and pull yourself in a secret place. Because fasting is not about what you do openly. It's about your ability, your willingness. Come on here to isolate yourself in a time where you deny your flesh. And when I say flesh, I'm not talking about just your physical body or the skin that covers your bones. I'm talking about your mindset, the mindset of a natural man. Y'all hear the heart of God the mindset of the world, amen, to isolate yourself, y'all don't hear the heart of God, and to deny your flesh of all that it lusts after and all that it desires, y'all hear the heart of God, and to spend that time in prayer being strengthened by the power of God, y'all don't hear the heart of God.
Amen. Um, and then Luke 42, Luke chapter 4, 32 through 36 will be as easy for you. Likewise, Matthew uh, chapter number eight, verse number 16 says that when it was evening time, amen. Um, if we look up a little earlier in Matthew chapter number eight, amen, Jesus was on his way to heal, heal the servant of the centurion. He said, if you send your word, you don't hear the heart of God. I know that he'll be healed. And in the self same hour that Jesus released the word, come on here, again, that individual was healed. And so there's the proof of Matthew 10 and 1 that some of us have been given power. Not all of us. Don't you fool yourself. Not all of us. Amen. And so um, demons are cast out by the word. Matthew 8 and 16 says that in the evening after he left from there and after he went down to Peter's house and, and it ministered, because see some of you, even as deliverance ministers in particular, as apostles, prophets, evangelists, and pastors and teachers, amen, you're so concerned about your house and you're so worried about your house that you can't be focused on the tasks that are ahead of you. You cannot be focused on the call by which you were um, uh, uh, summoned. Come on here, y'all. You can't focus on who you are and your purpose for being that if everybody could be an apostle, then everybody would be one. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, I think around about the 38th verse, 33rd verse somewhere, Apostle Paul asked the question, are all apostles? We know they're not. Are all prophets? We know they're not. Are all teachers? We know they're not. Why? Because according to Ephesians chapter number four, verse 11, he gave some, meaning a few. He gave some, meaning a few. He gave some, meaning a few. And he gave some, meaning a few. And that few of apostles, that few of prophets, that few of evangelists, that few of pastors and teachers were given the grace as such according, come on here, to the gift they were to the body of Christ, according to the power that had been given them. They were graced. Come on, y'all. Look. Acts chapter 19, verse number 20 says, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Uh -huh. The word of God has the power to cause it to grow. And when it grows, that means that it's spread, it's propagated, it's preached, that it has reached places beyond man's human comprehension. And it said because it was able to grow, it prevailed, which means to overcome, to overpower, to overthrow. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. And then Romans 1 and 16, that the, um, that the word of God is the power of God. Um, about which men are saved. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. Y'all doing too much. Amen. Y'all are standing there. Some of y'all, amen. Y'all are doing too much. Repeat after me and you'll be saved. That, that ain't nowhere in scripture. There's nowhere in scripture where anybody led anybody to Jesus Christ by saying, repeat after me. The scripture says that the gospel was preached. And when the gospel was preached, he who repented accepted Christ as his savior. He believed in his heart that the Lord raised him on the third day, that Jesus is the son of God. And he confessed with his mouth that Jesus is Lord, and that's how he got saved. And the Bible said, how did that take place? So let, let, let me get over there. Romans 1 and 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, which is the word of God. Why? Because it, for it is the power of God. It is the strength of God. It is the ability of God. It is the capacity of God. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. It is the force of God. It is the life of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Come on here. And it's already gone to the Jew first and the Greek. And now it's at your house. Come on here, y'all. Let me let me go over. Um, now this, I'm going to throw this scripture in here as a reference to what I just read. Um, in, in Romans chapter number 10, y'all hear the heart of God again. And I want to start at verse number nine. Glory be to God. Let me first say um, in verse number 10, 10 and one. Amen. Apostle Paul said, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. And y'all don't hear the heart of God. That's my prayer for the United States of America. That's my prayer come on here, for some nations that are assigned, is that the entire nation, come on here, y'all, um, might be saved. And might meaning that it's there, it's available, that by their will, they will choose the salvation of the Lord. And I'm jumping over to verse number 
um, nine, it says, uh, um, let me say verse number eight, again, but what saith it? The word is not thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. Uh -huh. That is the word of faith, which we preach. The word of God produces faith. And if it produces faith, it is the only thing that can increase your faith. Amen. Um, he says in verse nine, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Come on here. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And what is he believing? The word of God. Uh -huh. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And what is he confessing by? The word of God. Amen. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Let me jump down for a minute. How then? He said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 13, 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him? Come on here. Of whom they have not heard. Come on here. We're talking about the demons. Y'all are casting out of people that don't know him, haven't heard on him, and can't call on his name. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach? Come on here. Except they be sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good um, of good things. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. He said, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. Y'all hear the heart of God. And then you have got to obey the gospel. Fourth scripture, 1 Corinthians 2 and 4. It is probably one of my favorite scriptures. Amen. Um, Apostle Paul said in my speech and my preaching were well, not well, without, uh, were not with the uh, words of men's wisdom. Amen. But it, it was in demonstration of the spirit and the power. Come on here. When you speak the word of God with authority, when you speak it with the power that has been given to you, Y'all hear the heart of God. Demons tremble. They got to come out. You don't have to be special. You ain't got to do all the extra stuff. Just release the word of God. But you have to know it to release it. Amen. Uh, Matthew 8 and 16, we talked about that. Genesis chapter number one. Amen. Y'all hear the heart of God. Um, and, it, and it says in the, script, in the scripture in verse number two, and the earth was without form and void and the darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. So it's only the word of God that God is going to recognize and acknowledge. Y'all hear the heart of God. Amen. Psalm, the 119th division of the book of Psalms, verse number nine, how shall a young man cleanse his way? Y'all hear the heart of God by obedience to the word of God. Y'all hear the heart of God. Amen. Um, <clears throat> Um, the 100 division, uh, the the 119 division of the book of, of the book of Psalms, uh, verse number 11, James 1 and 21, um, Psalms 119 and 133, Psalms 103 and uh, verse number 20, Acts 14 and 3, First Timothy 4 and 5. The word of God is a sanctifier. There is nothing that the Lord that is made that cannot be cleansed, that cannot be sanctified. Come on here by the word. They were talking about food and they were talking about how um, people were offending other people by what they ate or what they refused to eat and food sacrificed to idols and all that good stuff. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. And my apostle Paul was telling Pastor Timothy, he said, listen to me. He said, um, you can make that you can make that clean. Come on here. You can sanctify it by the word of God and your prayer. So praying the word of God will sanctify what God has for you. Amen. Romans 10 and 17, Hebrews 4 and 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful. Quick meaning, um, not just meaning, uh, for some of you, you know, quick to mean to make alive or to be alive. And for some of you, you know, quick to only mean immediately. Well, it means both. Amen. The word that quickens, that makes you alive, the word that, that, that moves or causes an Immediate move on your behalf. The word of God is quick and powerful, powerful right here, meaning forceful and influential, able um, to uh, um, have an influence on, on the flow of things, able to change um, the course of events, able to influence and to persuade God's people in the ways of God. He said it's um, able to cut asunder a man 
Uh, uh, um, uh, he said the word of God is quick and powerful um, oh glory be to God let me just go over there and read it real quick y'all amen I know it y'all know we know it amen for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword amen um, that sharpness according to this scripture is not just about what you cut away and you should be getting rid of some stuff because can I help y'all you don't have to cut anybody if you stand firm and you walk by faith in the word of God I promise you people will cut themselves. The word is so sharp. Amen. Um, the word is so keen and insightful. The word brings so much revelation and insight. Come on here, y'all, that the people around you that have been able to hide because you could not see them are now able to see that you see them. They know that you know the game that they're playing. You, They know that you know what they were there for and they just cut themselves off. Y'all hear the God, heart of God, quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen able to cut asunder um what did he say? Able to cut asunder uh, to the piercing, uh, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Come on here, y'all. Uh huh. Because the two are one, and they're in cahoots until your spirit gets saved. And when your spirit gets saved, now he's being strengthened to help your soul get saved. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. And then he says this: um, uh, able to um, uh, uh, and of the joints and, and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. Um, Acts 13 and 44, Luke 11 and 23, Revelation 19 and 13. And you need that. Why? Because John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. John 1 and 2 um, says, and in the beginning was the same. In Revelation 19 and 13, it gives a description of um, Revelation 19, gives a description of Jesus Christ. And it gives um, uh, apostle uh, um, John sees a revelation. The sky opens up and he sees something that he's never seen before and he sees our Lord on the back of a beast. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. And he said when he looked, he saw that his name was written on his thigh and the name of the fellow on the back of that beast was the word of God. Come on here, y'all. Amen. Luke chapter 4, verse number 4. Amen. Um, Luke chapter 8, verse number 21. Amen. It distinguishes the family. This is where Jesus says, who are my father, my mother and my brethren? Come on here, but them that do the, um, the will of my God, them that are obedient to the command, to the word of my God. Y'all don't hear my heart, my heavenly father. Amen. And so sometimes we get stuck. We think that we can follow somebody else's word. Come on here and then be considered to be the sons and the family of God. Acts 6 and 7 says that the word grew and it increased. Amen. The word became more powerful throughout the regions and throughout the nations. Hebrews chapter 11 and 3. Amen. Um, Revelation 1 and 19. And this is what I said before, that the word of God will isolate you when you start living, amen, according to the word of God. When you hold yourself to the standard of the word of God, amen, you'll find that a great deal of people, amen, will reject you, turn their backs and walk away. It's not you, it's the word. Y'all hear the heart of God. He said, write the things which thou hast seen and the things <coughs> uh, which are and the things, amen, which shall appear. Um, hereafter. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. And so the word of God, I'm sorry, y'all, that's not 19, that's nine. Amen. Revelation 1 and 9. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the aisle that is called Patmos for the word of of God. Y'all hear me? My obedience to the word, my obedience to preach the word, my obedience to teach the word of God, come on here, calls me to be cast to the Isle of Patmos, come on here, because the word was the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. Y'all hear the heart of God? It'll isolate you, and the isolation is good. Why? Because he has a revelation uh -huh, that most of us are still scrambling to get. He received a revelation, not revelations, but one revelation that turned this world upside down. Y'all hear the heart of God. Amen. Um, revelation 1 and 19, 1 John uh, 2 and 14, Isaiah 40 and 8, John 1 and 1, and John 1 and 2, 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse number 17, 1 John 2 and 5. Y'all hear the heart of God. 2 Corinthians 5 and 19 and 1 Peter 1 and 25. And lest I forget Psalm 91. Y'all hear the heart of God. Amen. The 91st division 
of the book of Psalms. Y'all hear the heart of God. That joker right there, the secret place of the Lord. It is a hidden place. It is a place that most people aren't privy to. Y'all hear the heart of God. Most believers can't even get there. That secret place is called the word of God. It's a mystery to them that live outside of it. No matter how saved they are, how called they are, how anointed they say they are, how gifted they are, how many followers they are, how great they are, it doesn't matter any of that. What matters is this, y'all. This is what matters right here. Come on here. Is that this word is effective in your own life? Come on, y'all. If this word is not doing anything in your life, what will it do in mine? Y'all hear the heart of God. Let me take a quick look at Psalm 91, amen. Um, that is like, I, I, I can't say that again because y'all are going to think the whole Bible is my favorite set of scriptures and in actuality it is. If God said it, it's, it's my favorite, but there are some that just do the doggone thing. Y'all hear the heart of God and Psalm 91 is one that does the doggone thing. I'm going to put the word of God in certain places. He that dwelleth in the, the word of God, uh -huh. um, the word of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the, wor the word of the almighty God. He will open up his mouth and say of the Lord uh -huh, that the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. He is my God and in him I can trust. I know that his word shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from every noisome pestilence. I know that his word shall cover me uh -huh, as feathers and it will be his word is as wings and I can trust because his truth is my shield and my buckler. And what is his truth? His word. I don't have to be afraid for any terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Uh -huh. Why? Because I'm dwelling in the word. To live in the word is to obey it by, uh, by faith. You can't obey it by force. You can't obey it by obligation. You can't obey it because um, you know how we do or we have done. Okay, maybe y'all didn't do that, but there were some days, amen, I did what I saw. Lord, if you do this, I'll do that. Making promises and vows to God to do stuff that you don't have the capacity to do because the word of God is not in your life. And can I help y'all? There's no scripture that teach that commands that we read the word of God. Reading the word of God gives you no power. It just gives you something. Um, it's just something you read. It's like reading a comic book. Y'all don't hear the heart of God, but it doesn't give you the power of the superhero. It's when you study the scripture. Study brings you into understanding. Reading just lets you see a few words on a page. Y'all don't hear the heart of God, but you don't see the God that you're reading about. Y'all hear the heart of God. And so he says, uh, um, that, that what happens is that by the word of God, by the power of God's word, a thousand shall fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand. But what caused them to fall can't come near me. Come on, y'all. Why? Because I'm in the word of God. Some of you are obedient to the word and don't even understand that what you see is not an enemy attack against you, but it is the wrath of God for the wicked. It just happens to be that they live next door to you, but it's not what's happening to you because you see it happening around you. Look, and it's with my eyes only that the word of God will cause me to observe and to recognize that this is the reward of the wicked, that the enemy is not attacking me so I don't have to fight back. This is God serving up recompense to his, to the wicked. Look, he said, because um, we have made the Lord, which is our refuge, even the most high, our place of habitation, because we've made God's word, um, our place of habitation, living in the word, dwelling in the word, abiding in the word. Come on here, y'all. Um, no evil can befall you. No evil can come upon you. No evil can rest on you. No evil can determine your life. No evil can dictate your walk. No evil can dictate your ministry. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. He says, and neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. Amen. So what does that mean? Then when sickness comes against your body, don't just run for Zycam. Y'all hear the heart of God. Run into that word. And if, if examine yourself, be real with you. Am I really devoted to the word? Am I devoted to study it? 
Am I devoted to prayer? Am I devoted to confessing it? Confessing it? Am I devoted to living it? Because if I'm not, this sickness is because I walked away uh -huh, from the secret place. The only time the word can find you in that spot, the only time the enemy can enter in to the habitation of the word is when God sends him on assignment. And that assignment is because God is trying to get something from you that you don't want to give up. Come on, y'all. Why? Because I want to restore much greater. I won't even say a double portion because God is so beyond double portion. Y'all hear the heart of God. He's so beyond restoring a double portion. And some of us, that's all we're yelling and screaming for is a double portion. Lord, give me double. He's so beyond the double, y'all. Listen, and so it says um, that, that because we've made the word of God our refuge, that we've made him our most high and our place of habitation, that no evil can befall us. It cannot come upon us. It cannot take us out. It cannot destroy us. Neither shall any plague come not our dwelling. Come on here. And he says that I'll give the angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. And those ways are the ways that God has set before you, the will of God concerning your life. Your angels are assigned to help you stay in the course and in the path that God has set you on according to his word. Amen. He says, um, so you won't hit a stone. You'll stop tripping up. You'll stop missing God. You'll stop most assuredly being offended and letting yourself receive the offense. Y'all hear the heart of God. You'll do what the scripture says. If a man offended you, come on, you'll go to that brother. You won't take communion. You won't go to the altar. You'll stop prophesying, lying, and doing all the other stuff because y'all know y'all lying, right? You know you're not casting out demons and you're offended all day, every day. You know you're not casting out demons and offense lives in your heart. You know you're not casting out demons if rejection abideth all up in your heart. Come on here, y'all. You know you're not casting out demons with that unforgiveness and that bitterness in your heart. You know you're not casting out demons with resentment and the word that you prophesy is contaminated. The word that you prophesy becomes witchy, y'all don't hear the heart of God. Why? Because you had not dealt with your heart. You haven't allowed the word of God to do what it does greatly, and that is to purge, to purify. Come on, y'all, to heal, to restore. He said, this way, when you stay in the course, when you stay on the path that God has set before you, Amen. Um, you'll be able to tread upon every opposition and adversity that comes up against you. Come on here. You'll be able to bring destruction. You'll be able to crush under your feet. Why? Because you're walking in the ordered steps of the Lord. And every step is ordered in order to bring destruction, destruction to the power of the devil in your life. Because you set your love upon God, because you set your love upon the word of God, that you love it to study it, you love it to live it. He said, therefore, by the same word, I will deliver him. I will set him in a high place. Come on here, y'all, because he has known my name. He understands who I am. He understands what I'm able to do. He understands my willingness to move on his behalf. And when he calls on me, come on here by my word, I'll answer him and I'll be there with him in times of trouble. By my word, I will deliver him. By my word, I'll satisfy his life. By my word, I'll give him long life. By my word, he'll see the manifestation of my salvation. Apostle do what are you saying? A whole lot of y'all aren't preaching the word and you're going to need to get in a place where you can. If you don't have a leader, you're not doing well preaching because you need somebody that can hold you accountable to the word you say you know and understand. The scripture says that I will um, give you pastors after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And that feeding is not preaching and hooping and hollering and jumping around off of the stage. It is the ability to firmly position yourself. Come on here to place yourself in a position whereby you know and understand the word and it is 
out of your experience with God. It is out of your relationship with God that you bring that people to a state of knowledge and understanding. This is the thing right here. When you know and you understand, come on here, y'all, you are more apt to avoid. You are more apt to eschew that which is not God. Come on here, y'all. And that means to avoid, and that means at all cost. Come on here, y'all. The word of God provides the wisdom. The word of God is the light that causes you to see all things in darkness. Come on, y'all. Preachers, you got to step your game up. Matter of fact, let me rephrase that. You got to step into the game. Preachers, you got to get in the game. If you're preaching and teaching anything but the gospel of Jesus Christ, you are in error. You are in error. If teaching what somebody else wrote in a book is more imperative to you, or more important to you when it concerns the people you have missed God. And you've got to fix it. You've got to sit yourself down. Can I help y'all? This is also a season of drawback. This is a season where before we enter January 1st, 2024, because I won't say the new year because we're already in the new year. Amen. Before we enter into January 1st, 2004, for the heart of God. God intends some of you, um, there are things that you're doing that you've been doing for years that the Lord is going to call you to stop doing. There are some connections you've made over the years that have been beneficial to you that God is going to call you to cut and sever. Y'all hear the heart of God. There are going to be some folks you have to turn and walk away from. There are going to be some things that you've always done in your church and your ministry that you're going to be called to stop doing. There are going to be places that you've always gone that you're going to be commanded not to go. Why? Because anything that steals your attention from the word of God is a hindrance. It is adversarial. It is the opposition. Y'all hear the heart of God. I don't care how God appointed it is. I don't care how God manifested it is. I don't care how anointed it is, how appointed it is. If it takes you out of the word of God, in my heart, it's no longer God for you. I don't care if it's your marriage, your children, the cat, the dog, your mama, or your daddy. If <clears throat> you can use it, preachers of the gospel, if you can use it from keeping you, if you can use that to keep you from studying the word of God, y'all hear the heart of God. God is calling for you to let it go. He's calling for you to give it back. He's calling for you to let it lie where it lies. Y'all hear the heart of God. He requires and he desires you over what he manifested through your hands. And there are a lot of us that are living so far beneath what the word of God requires of us. And I'm not talking about money. And I'm not talking about houses. And I'm not talking about blessing. I'm talking about living beneath the standard of God's accountability. And because of that, our families are easily led astray. Second Peter chapter number three, round about the six or seven verse talks about the silly women who are easily led astray. And some of us, amen, some of you are easily led astray. Why? Because the word of God is the light that helps you to recognize who and what is in your midst. You got to drop that form of godliness. The word of God will cause you to drop the form of godliness. Because the form of godliness uh, strips you of the power to be free. It strips you of the power to walk in liberty. Y'all hear the heart of God. He said, but uh, um, in uh, verse number six, he said, those that have a form of godliness and deny the power of God, amen, are of the sort um, of those which creep into houses and lead captive silly uh, and lead captive silly women who are laden with sin, led away with diverse lust. 
So a great deal of our people, first of all, a great deal of us are learning, but never coming into the knowledge of the truth. And because a great deal of us, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, bishops, overseers, elders, superintendents, and all the other stuff we got in churches today, whatever your reformation, denomination, or whatever your organization has going on, however you line it up and whatever you say, at the end of the day, you better get people out of leadership. If you put them in leadership and they don't have that word established in them, get them out of leadership or you will have to pay their price. Y'all don't have the heart of God. If you know that you, and listen, I don't care how skilled you are. If you don't have time to give God, how can you give 10% of anything else and you don't give God 10% of your day in the word? Because you should get the full 100 through your obedience. But at least 10% of your day, at least two hours and 40 minutes ought to be devoted to studying the word. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. Prayer is your offering. Come on, y'all. As a result of paying your tithe of your time. The tithe of your life. That I sacrifice my body. Wholly acceptable. That I'm not coming into a state of obedience when my physical body will no longer do what it does. Listen, I thank God for those of you who joined us this afternoon. I pray that you hear God's heart because I talked about three different things, amen. But I pray that you heard the heart of God in all of those. And the heart of God is, is that he wants to set his people free. Come on here, y'all. No later than December 31st. He wants to set his people free right now. He wants a people who are free. Listen, this is what deliverance looks like. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 8, the scripture says, be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, is roaming around. He's roaring like a lion, seeking whom he can devour. Listen, it is significant that um, Apostle Peter said, likened him to a lion. Because he's trying to deceive God's people. That's that false antichrist. That's that false image of who God is. So he's not just, because he's too subtle to come out. You know what I'm saying? The roar of the lion represents his authority over all kingdoms. His authority to rule well. His authority over everything in this earth and beyond. And so when the devil comes in roaring, he comes to pass himself off as the false Christ. The false king of kings, the false lord of lords, the the false first and last, the false beginning and the end, the false alpha and omega, the false deliverer, the false redeemer, the false savior. Because why? People that believe that this false Christ is the true and living, the son of the true and living God will follow him. And they will follow him straight into a place of death, hell, and destruction. Come on, y'all. So true deliverance causes your mind to be sober, sound thought, able to process because you keep your mind stayed on God and the things of God. Y'all are crazy because y'all thinking of a whole bunch of stuff at one time. Y'all are trying to make stuff work in your mind that you're not assigned to make work. You assigned to carry it out, but that doesn't mean you have to, you make it work. It's already worked out. You just have to carry it out. And because you're making yourself sick. Come on here. Trying to figure out ways to do what God promised he would do. You just have to wait on him. You just have to wait where he says to wait. If I tell you to get over by the brook, because I'm going to feed you there in the middle of a famine in the winter time, when that brook should have been frozen. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. If I tell you to go over there and wait, go over there and stop trying to figure your own thing out. If I don't tell you to go in the cave, why are you hiding from your enemy, Bill Collectors? Come on, y'all. Y'all hear the heart of God? A man with a sober mind 
We can process what we see, what we hear, and whatever else is going on with our natural senses. We are able to process what we see and hear in the spirit as well as what we see and hear in this earth, in the natural. Y'all hear the heart of God. He just wants a people that will live according to him. He said, be sober, be vigilant. That means to be alert, to be awake, to be aware, to not allow anything to pass you by. Matthew 13 says that the people can't be converted. Because see, I'll tell y'all what's wrong. Again, why deliverance is not sticking and staying with a great deal of people is because they've not been converted. Y'all don't hear the heart of God. He says, they close their eyes and their ears are dull of hearing. Disinterested and they have turned off their ability to hear the word of God. He said, because if they can see and understand, if they, can, if they can see and perceive or recognize, if they can hear and understand, know without a shadow of a doubt. Listen, he says that in their hearts, they'll be purged, they'll be perfected, they'll be delivered. And he said they'll be converted. And in that conversion, y'all, hear the heart of God in that conversion. In that conversion, God gets to be glorified. Y'all hear the heart of God. Amen. Take the word of God. We don't take it with you. Take it wherever you go. Hide it in your heart, as the scripture says, um, through the mouth of Apostle Paul and the writings of Apostle Peter, not Paul, to sanctify the Lord in your heart. You can't squeeze this big old God in this teen at your little heart. Y'all hear my heart. You cannot squeeze this big, big God we serve in this teen at your heart. So how are you going to get him there? You're going to hide the word of God there. You're going to sanctify God's word in your heart. You won't share your heart space with your spouse, with your mother, your father, with your children, with your lover, with your side piece, with your job, with your finances, with your business, with your none of that. Y'all hear the heart of God. I hear your Holy Ghost. He just said it's by this word that's hidden in our heart, in our hearts, that we are going to take repossession of the seven mountains that we call the mountains of influence. Y'all hear the heart of God. We owe ourselves that. Amen. God bless you guys. My prayer for you, amen, is that you have a hunger and a thirst for the word of God. It's what's righteous. It's what delivers. It's what heals. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Amen.
it, uh, smell it, this is what you have to do with the word. It has to be so you want to eat it. It has to be so that you can smell it. You have to yearn.